everybody and welcome back to How Hard Can It Be? Now if you are new to my channel, I'm Phil Murphy and this is a Nauticus 27 foot. She was born in about 1971 and I'm in the process of starting a, re a restoring uh, from the beginning right through to the end. So, shall we get on with the episode? I think so. No, I'm missing something. can't remember. I know what it is. Cue the music, John, please. Today's episode is going to be putting these hardwood straights on this boat and in order to do that what we're going to do is we are going to use some white spirit, some toweling and some Sikaflex in black. So before we put that on the important bit is, is to make sure that this is grease and con contaminated free. Once we've got that nice and clean and the lower section clean then I can use my spatula I can uh, put some of this Sikaflex on these areas here and then I will smooth it out all the way down to uh, uh, to the, well not to the end but to the end of these pieces of teak uh, hardwood which by the way are about four meters in length because I'm going to do each section in two so we're going to get one long length on uh, and then there's going to be a break and then there's going to be a small section the small sections at the back aren't going to be placed on the boat just yet it's not necessary to do that because we just want to get the front sections on as you know from the last episode so we can start the interior and get get cracking on it while it's winter so that's the procedure for today. So all in all, fingers crossed, we're going to be able to try and complete this one and this one and on the other side. All being well today. So, shall we get on with this episode? I think we should. Let's go. I'm just using standard white spirit. There's not much dirt on there to be honest, but it's clean as we can. Okay, so that area now is uh, all nice and clean. So it's time to put this, uh, I keep remember, forgetting, uh, Sika Flex on the boat. So I'm going to basically uh, put a bead over the top of the hole all the way along till I get to the end of where I want to go. And then I'm going to come back and do a secondary walt bead and go under the hole. So then it's nicely uniformed on both areas. So I'm going to go get moving on it now. Good luck. Thank you. It's so difficult to squeeze out as well. Just to tell you how much these tubes are, they're about £16 a tube. So they're not cheap. I suppose they do the job well. Right, what do you want me to do? Okay. 
So you're going to screw these into place, one side and the other. Inside. Inside. You'll use this. All right. Um, but what we'll do first is we'll bolt. We'll bolt up there. We can work my way along. Right. Okay. Um, uh, did you put the? Yes, it's up there. Okay. Are well, you ready, Eddie? side. So this one just straight in with it, it's all the way through. Yeah. Good. Now that looks good. Very happy with that. That angle's great. A bit of this, uh, a bit of that T coil uh, on there. Just where we uh, made that cut because we forgot to do it before we did it. But hey ho! As you can see, there's just a bit of sticker uh, sticker flex coming out, which is perfect because once that hardens off and it goes rubberized or whatever it does, I can get my blade. I can just nip that off. What I am going to do is give this a sand. Obviously, I'm going to be putting those teak bungs in there uh, once I've cleaned all the holes out because there's still a bit of um, oil in there, etc., from where I filled them. And then it's going to have a, a, a brief sand over it, and then it's going to have one final coat, and that will be that will be there for many a year. Fingers crossed. Anyway. Solid, solid as a rock. I felt it as I was tightening them up, it was, it was going nowhere and it's so neat from the other side as well, it looks great. So, perfect. I think we'll go in so, and have a look. Well, we'll have a look once we get this one on. Okay, yeah. shall we crack on? Crack on. Okay, fourth one. Fourth one. From the end. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, you're, you're drilling it in with the electric drill, aren't you? Yeah. Trying to turn it. Okay. You ready? Ready. That's a good seal. Okay. okay. Yeah. These are the two long ones, remember? Right. You ready? Thank you. 
Ja, ska se. Noch nicht. Ja. Okay. And finally. Lovely, got it. That's enough. Doing well, haven't they? Yes. Look at that. Perfect. Brilliant. Yes. Excellent. Just blipping over there, which is exactly what we wanted. So, do you know what, John? A job well done. I think that's uh, that's been a hard job getting preparing, getting it ready, making sure that we don't drill silly holes in places that we didn't think we'd need. So I'm really chuffed with that. All four strips are on. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's all four. straight. Everything's good. Everything's ready for the back sections to go on, so we can forget about that. What we can do now is we can go full steam ahead with uh, the interior. Indeed. I think. I think. Cracking job. Cracking job. Okay, well I think we should call that a night for now. Uh, we shall continue again. Um, not sure what, but we shall continue this episode with something. So This is episode 12, by the way, we're on now. Episode 12, you heard it. Episode 12, that's great. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. See you later. Hi everybody, it's another day and it's dowel day or plugging, I think that's the right word. So today what we're doing is making some wooden knuckle dusters. No, we're not actually really. What we are doing is we are just take God, this is off, can you? Yeah, can. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm a professional John. Anyway, so what we're making is we're making some uh, wooden dowels, basically. And these are the ones that I've done. No need. Good job. So, as we're saying, making some wooden dowels. There. I've left them in there, actually, as they are, because it just keeps them there. So, basically, what I will do is I'll freehand them and just go through the final bit and just chop them off. So anyway, that's what we are doing. So I'm just going to just go through these now, chop them off, uh, sand the back edges off a bit. In fact, some of them are already going through. So you basically, you just puncture. He says. There we go. Basically you puncture them and you've just got a little raw edge and then I just sand them over uh, and then rock and running. So what I will do is I will just cut a few of these up now. Uh, the element of safety has sort of gone out the window when I do this because it's easier to do it freehand than it is actually to have it in a vice and just messing about. So, you know, take your life into your own hands when you're doing this bit. I don't want to be liable for anything. You just sort of line it back up and then it's outside. So, so that's what we're doing. Just put those there. So bear with me while I just get a few more. This piece of wood that uh, I've done here, uh, there isn't sufficient to do the whole of the boat. So what I did is I used a jigsaw 
uh, just to cut uh, one of these pieces of waste that were off the boat. I sliced that in half like so. It's not over critical to be um, the, the correct width because uh, some of these will be, well, most of them will be standing proud. I haven't got a problem with that because once the glue's set, I can then slice them all off because it's going to get a, um, a sander over it anyway. So I'll basically show you what I did with that piece, with this piece. That side is always, that side is flat anyway because of the way it was when I got it. Uh, it was pre-planed. So I use that as the top and I cut down from that. So economically, this is why you need to do it freehand really. Well, I do anyway. As I sort of go to the furthest point as I possibly can, score it, I can see where the circle is, and then go through like so. I try not to go, well, I could go all the way through if I wanted, but just to keep them together, I just basically go as near enough to the, uh, in fact, I'll, I'll show you how far I do go. With it being hardwood as well, you can't over-pressurise it because it, it, as you've just seen then, it stops it. There you go. You can just see a little imprint of it there. So I just leave that as it is. And then I go to the next section there, which is there. So go as close to the edge as I can. Just to get the maximum amount of this piece of waste, really. And if you've got too many, doesn't matter. Just bag them up and you've got them for future jobs or um, tasks that you want to do. So. So I won't touch that one because I know for a fact in previous experiences it's hot. So there we go, we've got some of these dowels. I have a, got a few here anyway. So I'll just sand those little edges off and then I shall um, put them in and I'll show you what I do. Okay. Okay, so I'm using some uh, wood adhesive. It's a weatherproof one. So uh, it's useful for um, outside as well as inside. Uh, I'm hoping this is going to be, uh, well, it's going in that hole anyway, so it's... How uh, much is that, Phil? Uh, yes, you do ask me these questions. Uh, I haven't been asked to ask you. Right, well, we'll have to do it uh, another time because I haven't got that, um, I haven't got that bill. So. I'll keep reminding you. Yes. So do you fill that hole or just? Yeah, just basically coat it like so. Just squeeze a load in. There's nothing fancy about it. Select a piece of wood. Uh, it can be, you can put it in either way. Doesn't matter because at the end of the day it's gonna get sanded. So just push it into place and then tap it in. So we don't go that far in to be perfectly honest, but I'm hoping that's going to hold. Is that making contact with the screw? Do I think, don't know. The screw head? I don't know. Get a bigger hammer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, have to straight through the belt. Yeah, I think that's fairly, fairly firm. <clears throat> I mean, those those bolt heads are round, so they do protrude this way. Maybe in hindsight, we might have 
been better getting flat headed ones rather than round headed ones um, that's the only uh, that's the only other thing but you know what they're in we can't take them out now because of that um, sick sicker flex that has well and truly stuck them so we've got what we've got once these have dried because at the moment I'm not overly enamoured with them to be honest they've gone in all right but they were quite small compared to those so I'll just have to wait and see whether that's uh, they're gonna work I'm not so sure yet I would prefer them to have gone in more but I think it could be the fact that I might not have drilled them far enough but then I run the risk of as you tighten if it's too far to the there you could split the wood exactly so <clears throat> it's a catch-22 with that but it could be that I've used too much glue it could be that I've used too much glue as well so what I will do is I will uh, I'll let these set and then I'll I'll cut them off and I'll just let's I'm going to see how tough they are. In fact, I might even try and drill, try and pull one out to see how well it has adhered to give me an idea of the rest of them. Sacrifice one of them anyway, because this one is a crucial one because it's. Although I now don't think it's going to be below the waterline, it's going to be constantly wet because, um, you know. The fact that the water can't be that far away because they don't but that sticker flex that's tremendous that's really yeah stuck well and even if those screws were taken out there's no way you're going to get that piece of wood out so what i'm going to do with this bit here is i will use a blade i'll show you basically i will run i'll run that across the top like so. And then I shall score it this way. Like so. And I don't need to be as critical as that because I'm going to be running a bead over this side and the underneath anyway to stop any just as a double security of any weather silicon, silicon bead uh possibly silicon bead but you know domestic silicon isn't when you're dealing with the waterways it can it can destroy that uh, so i might use um a clear uh version of this that's here um oh, oh no actually i don't think you can get a clear version i don't know now, I might use the black anyway, because I'm going to, you, you can't hardly see it when it's against the blue. So, anyway, I am going to seal it with something, let's put it that way. Really? Okay, so as you can see, the dowels are in, they are glued into place. Uh, I shall be back in the morning to see how they've got on. Uh, hopefully, uh, I've, uh, I will be able to just take these nibs off. Uh, and then I will give it a, a light sanding and we'll see where we go with that. Uh, obviously, uh, that will um, give me the opportunity then to give it another light coating. So then everything all marries up. I've just got the ends to do as well, uh, which I didn't do before. Uh, and that's that, I think, my friends, uh, should conclude this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, give me the thumbs up. And if it's your first time that you've watched me, um, you know, thank you for, for watching. Do have a look at the previous episodes. As I said to you before, um, you know, this is something that we're going to continue right the way through to the end of the build. And then once we've done that, hopefully next spring, it'll be on the water and then we'll be able to do some 
uh, videoing of uh, going up and down that Lancaster Canal. So thank you and goodbye.